and a bachelor's degree in English from the University of Washington in Seattle. Erica's research interests include Hawaiian and indigenous librarianship, context, and historical and ger generational trauma. And I've got a couple questions for Erica at the end that I forgot that she told us the first time around. I wanna ask her about some, some basic Canva stuff that I forgot. But I've been using Canva since our first session. And I think a lot of us are using it more because people are coming into our libraries. So Erica, go ahead, thank you. Thank you, Elena. Can you folks hear me okay? Okay. Uh, okay, let me go ahead and share screen. Um, okay, sorry, how does it look? I, I'm, not, I'm supposedly on speaker mode, but I can't see what you folks are seeing. It looks good. Okay. Okay. It looks good. Okay. Uh, so mahalo for the introduction, Elena. Uh, as Elena said, I'm Erica Diaz. Um, and just want to say mahalo to everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your support. Um, so yeah, part two of Canva. Um, I was thinking about what if you folks put in the chat, what did you want to design today? Um, flyer, you know, email, card, whatever. Um, Instagram, social media. We're just wondering if anyone had a particular opinion. Okay, so seeing one chat here. Flyer, okay. Anyone else? Okay. Well, one, oh, one more person, two more people, okay. Flyer, Instagram, okay. Website, email, Instagram, okay. So far, it looks like Instagram and Flyer are in the lead. Okay. And so we have Canva presentation options, Canva websites. Okay. Um, I guess let's go ahead and go with um, social media then, since it seems like that's kind of popular, like Flyer getting, uh, you know, Instagram. So let's go ahead with that. Um, okay. So um, this is just kind of the screen that you get to when you log in, but you folks know that since this is part two. Um, I did wanna show you something real quick that we didn't really go over last time. So if you just click on uh, at the top, if you just click like learn, it doesn't really matter what you click, but then um, you wanna scroll all the way to the bottom. And then in this um, section called resources, it has all of these great uh, built in tools for Canva. And I know sometimes like you just want to get started designing, but it's good to go here for ideas. Like sometimes I know what I have to make, but I don't really have like the best idea. Um, but I'm really good at kind of, copying, uh, you know, updating other templates. So one thing I like to do is the, the design size guide. And the reason I want to show you folks this is like for today, we're trying to create a social media flyer. And um, we're gonna go with Instagram. And so remember, we're using the free version, so we can't um, just resize our projects very easily. So we wanna be very intentional when we start from the beginning. So if we go to the um, Canvas built-in size guide, we can see here, um, if you're using Instagram, these are the different sizes that you need. So it's really helpful. You don't have to remember it. It's kind of just a helpful go-to. Um, if you've been doing like Instagram for a while, you probably know 1080 by 1080 square. Um, but then what if you want to do a story? That always trips me up. I like design something for a pose and then I'm like, oh shoot, I wanted it for a story too. Cause you know, that has to be taller. Um, so what you can do is you can start off knowing what your dimensions are. And then if you just go back into templates or if you go to home, either way, you can just start from scratch with the Instagram story or, um, go to a present uh, excuse me a template here so template social media instagram post and then i'm just going to click on a blank post you can just make something up here now if i wanted to kind of follow like the same uh theme throughout my post because i have the free version what i could do is i could now go to uh, Instagram story. 
and then start that there. So at least I'm kind of starting off just with my two blank templates and then I can just start designing and then I can just copy and paste the design um, when I'm done into the next um, into the next post. Okay, so here, this was just something I was messing with earlier. Um, any particular type of flyer you folks would like to do today? Particular topic or event at the library, something program maybe you're trying to promote? You can um, you can just say it out loud if you feel comfortable on microphone, or you can put it in the chat. Okay, Cinco de Mayo. Okay, okay. I don't know a lot about Cinco de Mayo, but um, we can definitely do that. Let's see. Book display. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm just going to use the search feature to my advantage so I can look up like book display or book. So I can kind of just scroll and see. I'll just pick something like this. Um, maybe not quite we're, what we're looking for, but we'll go ahead and adjust it. And then I'm sure you folks are used to seeing these um, Canva watermarks here. So that's because we're using the, the free version, right? But what I like to do rather than um, delete this, because um, remove watermarks means you have to pay for it. Okay, summer reading program was another idea. Perfect, so we'll just kind of stick with the book theme. Um, so what you wanna do is you wanna actually search for other um, elements or photos up to you on what you wanna use. Um, I'm gonna actually try here for photo. And of course, I'm seeing a lot of these crowns, which means it's a paid thing. So, now I'm just looking for anything that's free. Um, okay, so I'm just going to grab a couple of books and put them in here. And these aren't, of course, like uh, necessarily matching. These aren't. Um, how I would necessarily design a flyer um, if I was trying to make it all match. So maybe I should show you how, folks how to do that. That would make more sense. Okay, so the problem is trying to find the free images. So let me just get, let me just get that one image. Okay, let's focus on that. So then what I like to do, um, and I'll show you how to get the related images. What I like to do is here, because all of these elements are grouped, if I ungroup it, it's going to be very messy. You can see I have like maybe 15 or 20 elements. Um, if I want to just erase it all at one time, I can just click on it, hit the delete button. I can delete the one element or the group. And then I can just put this in its place. Um, I'm just going to press the back button because another thing I like to do is if you like the way something looks and you're really particular on size, you can do that. You can kind of line it up. Or we had briefly gone over this tip last time is you can look at the, um, the margins and the guides. And those you can kind of snap right into place here. So got your guidelines. if you wanted to be really uh, specific about where you put your design. But otherwise, um, you can kind of just eyeball it if you're okay with that. Okay, so I'm going back to that group of images and I'm just gonna delete that. Okay, there we go. Now let's say I want to maybe um, make the flyer more interesting, maybe change my text a little. And so um, actually let me sorry, make this a little smaller. Okay, now let's say we want to look for maybe one or two more books, make it a little more interesting of a flyer. I'm going to try here. Um, so where I've gone and I've chosen this image here, um, where the three little dots are, you can click on that and look for the eye. And then it kind of gives you a list of, um, 
sorry, click on the eye, and then it gives you a list of all the keywords. So, you know, as librarians, right, we like to, how do you search for stuff? What are the keywords? So these are all the keywords that uh, they use to kind of categorize this image. It's kind of a lot, but it gives you an idea of what words you can use to kind of find those elements. You can also um, add it to a folder, but just be careful with the free version, you're limited on the number of folders you can have. Um, you can add it to your likes if you want to find it later, right? So I'm going to like that. And um, if there was, for example, here, it has like the, um, the maker. If I click on that, I'm going to get related images. So the idea is usually when you have like a photographer or um, a design element and you go to the same um, creator, it kind of has some similarities. So if you want to um, create something that's similar in that sense. I'll just put this kind of computer image there. Okay. Um, I'm now going to duplicate this. I'm just going to press, actually, if you click on an, whatever element you want, press Alt and you drag it, it duplicates the image automatically. So that's click on it, Alt, and drag it. And it's really good if you just want to you know, quickly duplicate images, uh, shuffle things around. I'm actually going to delete that and duplicate here again. Okay, now one thing I can actually do that's helpful as well, I'm going to remove these rulers, okay, is I click, oops, see what's happening there? See when I try to move something? Now you can see like those two purple blocks. I do that all the time and it I always forget. So what you want to do is click on the element. So in this sense, I'm clicking on the background. And I don't want to fuss with it anymore. So I'm going to go into the upper right and click the lock icon. So now if I accidentally try to move that background, it's not going anywhere. Because that always kind of drives me crazy. I'm like, hey, it moved again. OK, and then what I'm trying to do is group these books together. So I'm just going to kind of highlight them. And see how they're all highlighting? Because the background is locked, it's not highlighting. So now I'm just going to press Control G, and that groups them together. So that's another helpful shortcut is Control G. Or you would go up here and manually select group on the toolbar. OK, so now I don't have to individually move these four books, right? It's all together. Now. I don't like all these words. I'm going to show you how to do um, a wavy text effect to kind of add some interest with your text. So ungroup this. Then I'm just going to kind of delete those elements I don't want in there. Let's make this a little smaller. So let's say 45. Make it smaller altogether. Okay. Just something short. Okay. Everyone doing okay? Okay. Uh, well, just let me know if you folks have questions. So I'm clicking on the text and then I'm going to the top bar where it says effects. And then I'm going to go to where it says curve. And then so notice how it automatically curves the text. Now I want to click on it again and at the bottom of your screen it has curve with a number so that's giving you the curve of the words so i actually just want kind of a slight curve because i'm going to do wavy text so let's say like 35 that looks good to me now quickly what i can do is i'm going to click on the words i'm going to press alt and then i'm going to move over right that duplicates it so now I'm just going to take, doesn't matter which one, take one of my read and grow, go back into effects. And now I'm going to do that curve the other way, right? So instead of 35, let's do negative 35. And then let me just kind of you know, line that up there. I can see where the, that purple, I don't know what the word is, purple grid is there. So now I can see, OK, read and grow. I like the spacing of that. Now I'm going to. Control G to group it. Then I'm going to 
alt and drag again. So now instead of making two copies, right, I just made one because I grouped this together. Oops, did not mean to move that. Okay, so now I'm going to take my two wavy lines and just kind of put them together, you know, how, however it looks good. Um, so I get kind of that wavy effect across. Now, um, I could just go ahead and I'm going to lock that there because I have a feeling I'm going to be moving stuff around. And it's going to get in the way of that read and grow. So just locking it there for now. Um, yeah, and so kind of that's what you would do with that to kind of get a nice text effect. Um, so we went over con control G. Oh, another couple of shortcuts that are super helpful. Um, I think last time we did uh, T, you just press T, that gives you text. Now, there's actually a couple other shortcuts you can do to just quickly get stuff. So if you press C, oops, C like cat or circle, uh, the C gets you a circle. So you just press anywhere on the design C, and then that C automatically pops up. Then you can do T, start typing, and then just move that over to your circle or whatever. Um, and then notice how I'm, I've got all this highlighted, but I don't want those books grouped, right? So I can actually just click lock that for a second. And then now notice I've just got the word in the circle. So I can move that around wherever I want. I can group it, lock it, whichever. And then when I want to go back and edit, let's say I don't like the placement of these books, I just unlock it, move it, move it around, relock it. Okay. Um, and now I just wanted to delete this circle, but I can't. So I just have to unlock it first. That's the only thing if you like to lock a bunch of stuff. Okay. Now, so we did the C. Now um, R is for rectangle. I know I'm th kind of thinking S for square, but rectangle, I guess, covers square and rectangle. Um, and that's just the letter. It's not even like control. It's just R. And then the rectangle comes up, C. Um, and then another really cool thing, which is kind of new to Canva, is if you press L or line, because I'm always looking for a line and I, I'm always wanting to, uh, what's that called? Make my line fit my design, and I I never can find the perfect line. But now with this add a line feature, it's super easy because you place it how you want. You know you can angle it how you want. Um, got a question? Oh yeah, <laughs> and you don't even have to press Control L. You can actually just press L. You don't even need the control. That's the cool part too. So I guess maybe just don't accidentally press letters. Um, but there's only like five, so it's not too bad. So once you get your line and you're clicked on it, the cool thing is in this upper left hand, there's all these options for um, changing it. So weight, you know, like you can in other programs, you can make the line thick, um, skinny, et cetera. Um, you can do like the dotted line. So I think this would be kind of cool, uh, cool if you were doing like a scavenger hunt or something, or maybe like a you want to show them something. So you can make, for example, this is an arrow on one side. And then on the right side, you can make that like also an arrow or a starting point. So it's kind of cool the flexibility you have um, with making your lines there. Okay. Uh, oops. Thing now is that our line, these parts are way too big. I don't like how big that is. So I would just tone down my line weight there. And you can even color it too, right? That's a cool thing. So you can color your line. Oops. There we go. Okay. Let's see a couple other. So we did the shortcuts. Um, oh, okay. So um, another thing I wanted to show you folks about. Um, saving time on like images, you want to make cool image effects. So let's see here, I'm going to add a page. Uh, oh, sorry, one thing I did forget. So let's say right from the beginning, we were talking about creating like saving time by creating multiple um, campaigns like your story and your post. 
So this is the story that we had, the Instagram story. And remember, it's more like a re long rectangle, whereas the post is a square. So I would just take this here and control copy that. And then, oops, I'm gonna make sure I control copy all of that and then control paste it there. I'm not sure sometimes I have a problem with that. Okay. Um, well, it's definitely easier than I'm making it. So apologies. Um, I think I might have to unlock my things here. But the other way, um, it, it's a little more time consuming, but the other way that you might have to do it is you might have to copy all the elements. Oops, okay. Sorry, I will figure that out for sure and get back to you folks on that. Okay, um, but the idea is just that it saves you time because you copy your image and um, put it here. If you're using a template, of course, it's um, easier because you would just go right to the same template and then you know put, put that there. But, um, but anyways, okay, sorry about that. So, so now what I wanted to show you folks um, on the second page was um, some different image effects. So I'm going to find here just like a person, right? So let's say a lot of times library flyers um, have a person on it or a person holding a book, etc. cetera. Um, and we just want Okay, um, not the best. I want to find a better image to show. Okay, maybe this one will be good. Okay, so a couple of um, features with images, like with the shadows. I don't know if you folks, um, has anyone tried using like the shadow feature? Thumbs up, anyone? Okay, um, well, what you do is you click on your image and then you go to um, effects in the top of top left. And then notice mine is not here. I just have photogenic and smart mockups. So I just want to scroll down over here. Um, so far on mine, it's like the third option, just where it says shadows. It's a purple thing. Oh, OK, shadow and text, cool. Um, so then what you want to do is just where it says connect, you just go ahead and connect. And it's not like installing anything on your computer or anything. Now, what I'm going to do is go to Glow. So it's kind of hard to see here, but so it added this faint little glow around the image. So I'm going to click on the image. And then notice how the glow has like those three lines that appear. So I'm going to click on the glow again. And then here's where I change size, transparency, blur. So blur is like the, the little outline you see around it. It makes it blurry or it makes it solid. So it's hard to see what's going on now um, because it's very thin, but I'll make the size big. So I don't know if you folks can see kind of this um, around here, the shadowy part around kind of grew bigger. Now I'm gonna go from blur to, to non-blurry and then you can kind of see it gets real sharp. And then transparency, right? So I can make it like a solid line or kind of more transparent. And this is a really cool effect if you wanna really highlight something. So let's say this said like, um, so I'm just reading a comment here. I like using shadow. I like someone, so someone says, I like using shadow when I want to use white light colored text on a light colored background. Save toner instead of using darker text, but still gives enough contrast to read. Oh, I like that tip. See, for, so saving toner. So they, the person is using a white colored text on a light colored background to save toner. So that really helps with print flyers. Um, so what's really cool is if you get the images where like a person is cut out or if you just had like image of a book or a shoe, something you wanna highlight, um, you can really expand that kind of glow of it. So we have just a black border, kind of boring, right? But let me click on it again. And then 
I'm going to go back to Shadow Glow. It's kind of slow here. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Okay. Now I'm going to change my color, let's say to purple. Nope, maybe pink since the background's purple. And just to kind of show you folks. So there. So that. So I've got the pink and the, the black around there making the, that image really pop. Um, what would also be great um, is putting in like rainbow, if you like rainbow effect, you can do that. Um, and you can do it on any, on any image, that shadow effect. Um, let's try one more um, shadow effect. Let's do um, a better image, let's see. It's the paid images are killing me. <laughs> I'm sure you guys don't like always getting that too. Okay, so, hmm. It's not really important, but I always take a long time picking images. See how it's, picking favorites are important. Okay, so, well, maybe that's not good either. Aha, uh -huh, here we go. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I've just picked an image. And then I'm going to go to effects and then shadows. And then this time I'm going to go all the way to the right where it says backdrop. And oh, this is not a good one either. I can see it right there. Okay. Sorry. Let me just get a better, one more better image here. So, um, like a cutout. I just need like a cutout of an image. Ah, and they're mostly paid. Aha, here we go. This would be perfect. Okay. Okay, so this flower here, sorry for all of that. Okay, I take a long time to choose my images. Effects, and then shadows, and then this is the, oops, the backdrop because we're going to make a drop shadow. So notice how as soon as I click backdrop, this um, shadow appeared here. So if I click on those three lines on backdrop again, this is where I get all these extra um, choices like I did in the other shadow, the glow. So here I can change like how blurry that shadow is, how you know transparent I want it. Um, let's even say I wanted like I don't know, a lighter shadow instead of a dark one. And then it changes the angle of the shadow, you know, horizontal and um, horizontal and vertically. So depending on what you choose here, and you can see as it's going, it, it moves the shadow. So kind of just a neat effect, depending on how you want to highlight your object or if you want to show a shadow. Um, and in fact, just real quick, because I want to show you guys how cool it is when you do um, the effects with the, the outline of the drop shadow. So, or sorry, the glow. <laughs> so I'm on shadows. My computer's a little slow today. Okay, glow. And then I don't know if you can see that like black outline kind of appear. So I've applied just like one layer. Um, oh, one thing I should note, once you do that layer, so I did that blue layer, I can't go back and um, adjust it. So I would have to just press my undo button um, to go back and do it. And then if, um, so if I make a mistake, I'll just have to delete it. But if I wanna add more layers, right? I just go again to shadow glow and then add uh, my other layer. So just go here just to kind of show. There we go. So just kind of showing, um, oh, and I have three layers there, how you can kind of have that pop effect. Um, Okie dokie. Um, let's see. 
Okay, I wanna make sure I'm leaving you folks enough time and I know Elena had questions. Um, Oh, okay. A couple other things. I don't know if you folks noticed, but in my, so I'm going to duplicate page here. When I went to the color in my um, selection on this left hand panel of colors, I have here this thing called New April 2021. And um, it's something that I just created because I wanted to show you folks. You may already know this, but. Um, I knew about it for a while and I didn't do anything. I don't really know why, but I was like, oh, I don't need to set it up. It's not a big deal, but it really does save you time. So what you wanna do is um, you can just go, you can actually just start off if you don't already have these colors, um, there should be a space here where you can do it, but I'll show you how I got there. So I'm just at the you know regular Canva design. And then if I go here, right, to learn, and then I'm, scrolling all the way to the bottom. This is of course the same if you Google Canva resources, but um, this way Google doesn't know what you're doing if you just navigate there. Okay, so I'm gonna go here to like color wheel or um, color generator, all of these different um, color functions. So remember as I was saying before, right, those Canva built-in tools, they can actually save you a lot of time. So um, design guide is what we looked at before for the sizes. So now I'm gonna go here to colors and then, so I've got all these options, right? The palette generator, color wheel, etc. Okay, so, oh, this is another cool thing, right? It can match the colors in your photos. So if you just upload an image, it'll automatically do that. Some different um, color generators for different ideas. Now, what I've done is um, just right here where it says create a custom color palette, I've just gone there. And then um, from here, I've just chosen, you know, whatever colors I liked. Um, and then I went ahead and I added it. So, but you already have Canva, so um, it'll just give you that option to add it to your, um, to your Canva account. So again, that's going to be here and then it'll, it'll ask you to name it. Um, it'll, and you can just name it whatever you want. I just, like I said, put new April. And so it only allows you three colors. That's why I have three colors here. So it's basically a time saver in the sense that um, anytime you want to use your brand colors, you know, it could be like your library's colors. So maybe you're doing your, your library social media and your programs and you kind of want to always have your logos and your font colors, um, your colors, then you would go ahead and do that here in your your brand. So you are allowed the three free colors. Um, you can't do you can't do fonts. That's a you have to pay for that. But it's really helpful um, to have the colors there. Um, creating a team. That's another thing that saves time. So here on the main screen. So on my main screen. Um, so I don't know if like any of you folks have. Pro Canva and Free Canva. Um, if you do, the easiest way to kind of switch between the two, um, if you have more than one account, in the upper right, you'll see this, the, um, the little circle with your initials. So you click on that and then you switch between your team. So um, the one I have at work is, that's like the Canva Pro. So my personal one, that's just my Erica Diaz's team. I click on that. Um, and I'll know what team I'm on, because if I click here on my icon, it, it tells me right away. And then, of course, if I'm in my my own team and I try to design anything, it gives, you know, I keep getting all these Canva Pro, um, like down here, uh, advertisements. So I know I'm in the free version. Um, so anyways, here's where you can title your team, you know, like if you're doing it for like a book club, for example, or... Um, I don't know, you, you could ref team, what, whatever you want to call it, um, adult, um, adult librarians um, team or something. So here you would invite your members and then you just enter in the email of whoever and then you select if they're gonna be admin or manager. Um, and it's just a way to kind of save time because that way if you're collaborating like on a team at work, um, even if you just want other people to see your, your designs, it's really easy to share it that way. You don't have to share each individual design. And um, with the couple of free folders you have, you can put the designs into folders. 
And yeah, that was pretty much it for those kind of basics. Um, I want to make sure I leave time for questions. So I will show you one more thing that um, Kiahiahi was asking about. So here, if um, I'm on a design, I can go into the upper right. So for example, the three dots, um, I have all these different options. So like present, present and record. So present and record is where you would record yourself. So you get the little circle bubble. Um, and then we've got, you know, printing options. I haven't tried that yet. Um, and there's all these other add-ons, which you can, um, which will also save time. But if I go here to see all, and then, so these are some of the stuff that um, Kiahiahi was asking about. So like website, if you just click on this, and then you can choose how do you want the website to look, right? So presentation is where it would look like slides, scrolling, um, you know, standard, you, you can choose from there. And so whatever you choose, you just open your website. And then this would be your URL at the top, of course. So I'm just gonna save that. And then it's cool because even though we actually made it from an Instagram story, I mean, post, it is kind of functioning like a scrolling website now. And the cool thing about doing something like this, right, is anytime um, I go back in here, I just update, um, update whatever I need to update, right? And then, pick the um, website option, right? And it's that same, same website. And so you can share that. You can you know, use like a bit.ly or some short URL and then share that website with people, which is also really good for like an individual um, event, right? You don't wanna have to, like maybe say it's an important event, but you don't wanna have to create all these social media campaigns. Plus you're gonna create like, um, a little website for, and there's all these components, whereas you can just take your one design on Canva and kind of just duplicate it across these different sizes and um, as Kiahi I had asked, different, you know, formats for presenting. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for being interested and asking questions. Um, oh, there is one more thing I really wanted to show you. Uh, is that okay if I show you folks? Okay, I guess. <laughs> sounds, sounds great. Sounds great, okay. Um, it was here on the, so I'm just clicking on my image. I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom. And then right here where it says apps and integrations, QR code. And I don't know if this like is old, but I feel like, People used to use QR codes so much, and then now they're kind of not, but then I feel like they're coming back. So anyway, that's why I wanted to show it to you folks. So let's take, for example, like um, my um, library, for example, if I just took my library web page and then I could pop that URL in there and generate the code. And so the cool thing is, if this was like an event in my library or whatever flyer for something in my library, I could just put that wherever I want on my design. And then again, just, you know, duplicate it on all the other um, flyers and websites and things I'm making. And then that way, when people navigate to that, um, it'll take them straight to my website. And the cool thing is, is, you know, maybe not so much, but you know, those flyers they have, and there's those like 10 things that you rip off with it, your number. You could even put something like this, a QR code, you know, on that, um, just to get another way to get your website out there. Okay. Um, yeah, I want to make sure I leave time for questions. So I don't know if you wanted to ask Elena or open it up to the floor. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask a question that people can think about their question. Uh, you showed us the first time how to find elements that didn't cost money. So that we would have to look and see something that we like and and there was a way that you showed us how to do that yeah so i used um i used a code and i forget what it is but i'm just gonna go to um i'm just googling free canva element code and then okay so here we go let me 
and the weird thing is is i don't know what i'm doing different but um i swear there used to be a way you could search so like you see right here where there's these these lines and then it asked me for color and language it used to ask me for free or paid and i'm like racking my brain i don't know what did, did, did that happen to you folks like it was there and it disappeared I think maybe they just want to try us to, they want to make us buy something so they don't have that option anymore, probably. Maybe. So, um, okay. So, so I just put, what's your hack? Yeah. Okay. So I just put that there. Oops. Sorry. I guess I need the little quotes. Interesting. Okay. Let me try without the quotes. There you go. Okay. Or the other one. There we go. And then, yep, so we'll see like how all of these are free. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that code might change too. So you should go, we should go to Google first and, and search and then try it maybe. Yeah, you can try that. The other thing is, um, the junk thing is, is like when you go to an image, right, the dots and you click on the, um, let's see, click on the eye. Um, it will give you similar like that, but it's not always free, but that's one way. So like if you find, especially if you find like the sketches where you really like the brand, um, I went to like, so like magic recommendations, sometimes it'll ask you, or you can just manually go there, click the dots and then the eye, um, or sorry, not click the eye, but click the dots. The, um, the eye tells you the info, right? And then see more like this. It usually gives you free if it's already free, but, um, but it could still generate paid stuff too. Did you, oh, did you have another question, Elena? Um, can you show us again real quick how to, I was making a flyer this morning actually, and I forgot how to upload a photo, a personal photo off my computer. So I had to go to uploads and I had to upload it, which is okay. But last time you showed us how to quickly upload, okay. Yeah, so the really easy thing is you just get into your whatever design. Yeah. Um, so, like, yeah. So even if you so, put it on the wrong page, no big deal. Yeah. So you just get your image and then you just drag it. Okay, okay, drag it. And then it's weird because sometimes it's like, wait a minute, where's my image? And then I'll go to uploads and sometimes it'll be thinking. So that one didn't take for whatever reason. So. There we go. So okay, no, okay, okay. Yeah, then it's there too. I'm okay. thinking and then loading at the same time. And then even if I delete it from here, it's still in my uploads. Good. Okay. Okay. Does anybody ha else have any questions for Erica? You can, you can write it out or you can speak on the microphone, whatever. Thank you for attending. Thank you. I think we, these are such classy ways to make really quick flyers. We appreciate that. And I want to remind everybody on our next HLS steps is on Thursday, May 27th. And the topic is how to better engage your audience using Zoom and Teams. Again, that's going to be at noon, Thursday, May 27th, how to better engage your audience using these kinds of platforms, Zooms and Teams, Zoom and Teams. So um, again, thank you so much, Erica. We appreciate your time. You do such a great job. And thank you, everybody. And please come to the next session. Thank you, folks, for joining. Thank you. Appreciate your support. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. OK, so I wanted to show you folks how to properly copy and paste. Um, from what we were doing earlier. So we were trying to take, so once we were all um, finished with our design, our um, text, all of that stuff, we wanted to copy this whole page, right? And paste it into our rectangular Instagram story. Uh, so remember we started off with a square. Now, if I wanted to just try and resize this, um, it's a paid feature. So that's why we're kind of doing this workaround. 
So a couple of things I didn't have right earlier was um, after you click on the image, you want to press Control A for all, and see how these blue grid lines um, show up. That's what you want to see. Earlier, um, when I clicked on it, I wasn't getting those blue lines, and so I found out what I have to do is unlock um, that screen, the background color. So again, I'm just going to click Control A. And I know it's working because I see all those blue grid lines. Now I'm going to control C to copy. And um, kind of the funny thing about this is this particular design, I actually have two background colors. I'll just show you real quick. You can see there and the colors there. So what I'm actually going to do is make my background um, is that color I have here. 3D, 2D, 5D. All righty. And that, that'll be my background color. And I'm just going to control B for paste. Okay. And notice how it's not perfectly sized because, again, um, it does want me to try and pay for Canva Pro, but this is a, a workaround to resize your images. Um, that way you don't have to uh, keep redesigning the same thing over and over. There's some design um, just with adjusting the images. So I'm going to drag and highlight over that whole page that I just pasted there. And then in the corner, one of the corners, you'll see the white circle. You just want to grab that and stretch your design to fill your page. Okay, so this is good um, for my purposes here. Now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and lock, lock that back design so I don't accidentally move it. Now, what I want to do here is just resize these books. So from here, I can kind of decide, okay, looking at my original image, um, I want to keep it somewhat similar, right? Because I'm trying to do the same kind of ad campaign. So I can adjust it a little. Um, it's kind of empty, so maybe I, I could duplicate the books. So control A, drag, I can do that. I like them. And oops, not the middle, sorry. Just move that there, there. So I actually want to highlight them, ungroup them. Now I'm going to regroup them. So instead of being two groups of four, I'm going to have one big group of eight. Now, anything I do to this whole group, it'll just happen as one unit instead of two. So I'm in a position. Oops, I keep pressing middle, but I don't want middle. Center. Okay. And then here I can kind of drag it, make it bigger. Okay. So now let's say I want to maybe make the font smaller. And I can kind of just move this depending on what I want to do with these elements. And I can change my line weight here. I was trying to stretch it smaller, but I, that didn't work because I have to use the line weight. Okay. And however, you know, you want to do your QR code. And Remember, we actually have two groups of words here. So I'm going to just, okay, read and grow, read and grow. Let's see, maybe font size 50. Let's see how that looks. Okay. Ah, so maybe now it's too short with the font size 50. So I think. What I'm going to do now is ungroup. So it's got these two. It's going to move that over for now. Ungroup that. Okay. Oops. Undo, Control Z. That's the one I want to erase. Okay. So now that I've got it kind of aligned how I want.
highlight them, group them, and then Alt, the Alt keypad, right? So I'm just making a copy and kind of just adjusting it there. Now, the beautiful thing is I can go ahead and highlight this again, ungroup, regroup it. Now I have this one bigger one I can stretch, make smaller. So let's say I just kind of wanted to keep it like that. At least that's a pretty similar design. Um, but if I wanted to maybe play with color, I could duplicate this here. So Alt and drag or Control copy also works. And then in the upper right, you've got the duplicate button. So lots of ways to kind of use the same tools. And I just kind of spaced these words out a bit, position, tidy up. It's just going to space them out nicely. And then here, I'm just going to position that at the back so the QR code comes out nice. Then I'm just going to choose colors because, hey, why not? And these probably aren't the best colors, but I'm just trying to show you uh, how to make a bunch of different designs. Uh, just a quick way to show different colors you can get there. Oops. And then maybe like I want this one to pop with some yellow or something. Okay, and again, it's up to you. Um, it's similar to the original design, just multiplying and adding colors. Um, so there you have it. It took some time, but I didn't have to design everything from scratch. And um, if we wanted to, we could duplicate the whole presentation, just going page by page. So I add a page, got that same background. So let's say we wanted to duplicate this flower. We added all those layers to, right? So control A. Control C for copy, Con click on the page, Control V, and I just pasted that down there. And this just looks funky because that's that shadow we added earlier. Um, but even with something like this, you can duplicate that, you know, depending on what you want to do. And there you have it. Hopefully, this method of duplicating and Copying your pages uh, will help you and save you time. Thanks again for tuning in.